Okay, folks, welcome back to the channel. As we continue with the uh, Tamir F4U Corsair. So, a few little bits have been done um, off camera. Um, and the reason for that is, um, it was a bit of test and adjust, really. So what I did is I just popped some UMP black primer down the seams just to check the seam work on the fuselage uh, that we made it together um in the last part um and they're all fine they did require a little bit more sanding um but they're done now so they, i'm happy with the seams we've popped the antenna on um and then here at the front the instructions tell us to pop another sort of antenna in or wire cutter or whatever it is but then for this version of the aircraft cut that off so it self fills the hole really um so that's brilliant um and the the wing roots are now on and in place um so yeah we're, we're making steady progress um what i have also done is put the fuel tanks together now the reason for this was i wanted to try and see um how i was gonna sort of paint and weather or initial weathering stages on these so these have been done um in the Tamiya uh, X4, which is just a standard blue, um, over a UMP black primer. And then what we've done is we've added uh, a gloss coat, VMS gloss coat. Um, and then we've gone in with a UMP concrete wash. Um, and you can see there that it's sort of accumulated that we've then removed most of the wash. So I'll show you that on the, on the main aircraft when we come to, uh, to panel lines and, and weathering and all that stuff but the kind of effect hopefully you can see i've done it on the cowling and you can see there and the effect that we're getting with the ump concrete wash um, so that's what i've been doing off camera um i've also uh sprayed the the undercarriage uh in this sort of gunmetal silver type color um, and then they've had a UMP dark dirt wash and removed as well as the wheels. Um, so this is all very basic stuff. If you look at the T55 video, it's essentially me gluing pieces together, really. Um, so we've also assembled the wings that we're going to have in the folded position. Um, and they went together like a dream. Um, and then what I've got on here, let's move those out of the way. What I've got here are the, the flaps, essentially. But obviously they're different flaps for, for different areas. So what I've done so I can remember which is which um, is I've actually just put a little bit of masking tape on and mark them so I can remember which is which and I don't get all confused um, when I start to put these things together. So that's that. And the only other thing we've done is just mask the canopy. And it was a very straightforward canopy mask, no issues at all. Um, so I just put some smear masking tape on um, and bedded it down with a, a toothpick or cocktail stick, depending where you are in the world. Um, and now that's ready uh, to go onto the aircraft, um, ready for primer, really. So what we're going to do in this video. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to um, essentially prime the, the main fuselage and the, the wing roots and we're going to get the wings themselves primed um, and then what we're going to do is put that blue on um, and show you how how we're going to paint that um, we'll also put one of the decals on the wings probably the stars and bars see how the decals are we'll be using ump decal solutions for that um, and then show you how we do the concrete wash which we will then do all over the aircraft prior to assembly um, because what we want to do really is we want to make sure that before we put these wings on that they're all decal weathered and all that stuff otherwise we're going to really struggle um, just because of the shape of the wings folded um, how to kind of get it all together um, and then what we can do once all that's done is we can mask it all off um, and we can spray the wheel wells and all that sort of stuff in the uh, the interior green like we've done on the rear one here and because we've done the rear one i can show you how I, i'm gonna protect that as we as we put the main color on the aircraft so 
first things first we're gonna get the the canopy um attached temporarily um to the uh the fuselage so the way i'm going to do this very simple is i'm just going to use some white tack um so the way we're going to do it is we're just going to make like these really thin white tack sausages so let's move that out of the way i am wearing gloves today which i don't normally do but i thought you know what i was painting earlier um so rather than using my grubby fingers if i put the gloves on before i was airbrushing that that might have been the way to go but hey ho here we are so once we've got this white tack in this very thin sausage we're just going to place it essentially on the interior or the inside of the canopy like so so we end up like that and then what that should allow us to do on both sides now you can use pva glue for this um yeah I, i've done that in the past and that works fine with clear parts um but the white tack works just as well for me um, because what we want to do once this is sort of sprayed painted is we want to um essentially move this rear canopy back um we we want to move it back so we can expose the cockpit and the work we've done in there on the finished model so that's that's what we want to do um so we we want it attached temporarily and there you go you can see that canopy is attached temporarily and the same on the front glass um because we, we're gonna want to go in and just where that gun sight is and stuff just make sure we can still get to it um essentially so we'll attach this white tack on the interior of the of the canopy or the windscreen in this case and then we'll just push that and i've done it the wrong way around so you see just be careful um that you're putting it on the right bit like so move that down and that should work fine there we go just gently push that into place make sure you've got none of the white tack sort of squeezing out the sides because if you have what that's going to do is essentially mask your clear part when you come to paint so there we go lovely job there we go and that's firmly or temporarily attached so we're going to prime this in ump black primer i'm not going to show you that because you've seen me do that on the t55 video um so use my very very useful makeup brush i think it's a blusher brush i'm not 100 percent sure um and just make sure it's dust free what i'll do is give this a quick wipe down um with ump airbrush thinner uh, just to remove any sort of residual fingerprint grease or marks or anything like that um, before we go in uh, and spray the primer on. Um, as I say, we're using UMP Black Primer um, and we will be spraying, I don't know, sort of 18 to 20 PSI through the UMP Apex 0.35. So I'll get that all primed and then we'll come back uh, and see what it looks like. Um, yeah so i'll see you once this is all primed and um, at the same time as doing that what we're going to do is prime these wings get those into ump black um, and then that allows us then to show you putting the blue down putting the decals on and all that sort of stuff see you in a minute okay so firstly apologies um i forgot to switch the camera on while i was spraying the wing 
uh, in blue. But essentially, it was all primed in UMP black primer, left sort of 12 hours-ish to fully cure. Um, and then I sprayed it in X4, which was thinned probably 60-40 um, with UMP airbrush thinner. Um, and then I went over it with a, left that sort of couple of hours to fully dry. And then I've gloss coated it with the VMS gloss varnish, um, all sprayed through the Apex 0.35. Um, and we're left with this kind of silky smooth uh, finish ready for decalin. So the whole aircraft is done like this, but I'm not going to show you decalin the whole aircraft. That's pointless. So Tamiya decals are notoriously thick. Um, so they look okay, um, but we'll see when we start to apply it and how it beds down. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to soak this decal in some warm water for about... 20 to 30 seconds um, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to use microset to set the decal in place um, and then I'm going to go in because it's a Tamiya decal um, and I've used these solutions many many times I'm going to be using UMP strong um, to get the back uh, the decal, the decal to bed down into the recessed panel lines, etc. I'm going to be using this. This is a watercolor pen. Um, there's nothing in it, but the bristles are ideal for decaling um, and applying these solutions. So now that decal has been soaking in water, what I'm going to do is take it out onto some sort of greaseproof paper almost. Give the microset a good shake and then I'm going to decant a little bit of it into the lid of the bottle. Get the brush nice and moist and then all over the area where the decal is going to go, I'm going to put microset like so. And the idea of the microset is that it will set the decal in place before we start to apply the UMP solutions to actually get that decal to bed down um, into all those recessed, recessed lines. And that's what we're after. So I'm gonna use some tweezers and I'm gonna check, first of all, that the decal is gonna move, which it is. So I'm just using my thumb. And now if I look at the instructions, I'm looking for this panel here where that's how far along we're gonna go and i'm looking at where we're going to end so if i bring this up to camera what i can do is see that that's about the right place we can adjust this once it's on the model but we want to be there or thereabouts um, on our sort of first application really and then slide the decal paper out using my tweezers get rid of that and then we're just going to use the finger to position the decal where we want it. Um, now with stars and bars, make sure you get it the right way, following the instructions with a point of the star at the top towards the leading edge of the wing. And then what we're gonna do is just get some water on a Q-tip and we're just gonna press that decal into place exactly where we want it according to our, our decal call out and just try and remove any air or any sort of liquid that may be actually under the decal. And that's essentially how we're gonna do it. There's no rush to this process. Um, you don't need to put loads of pressure on at this stage. We just wanna make sure that we've got all that moisture and everything as best we can out of the underneath of the decal because there's a lot of panel um, detail on this wing and we want the decal to conform as best as we possibly can to that. Now, as I said, Tamiya decals have a bit of a reputation for not being the easiest to get to conform. 
Um, so then what we're going to do is we're going to go in with our fingertip nice and gently and just press down on the surface like so and just be careful the decal doesn't stick to your finger because you don't want to tear it not at this stage well not at any stage but certainly not at this stage where you're setting that decal in place and then we're going to leave that now for about 10 minutes until that micro set is completely dry and then what we're going to do is we're going to come in with the UMP decal solution, which essentially is going to um, hopefully make this decal conform completely to, uh, to the panel detail. I can see it probably won't show very well on camera at the moment, but I can see that already the decal is conforming a little bit. So I'm trying to move the cotton bud in the direction of the panel lines to try and assist that decal embedding in in the right places and then just going around nice and gently and trying to get as much of that moisture out as you possibly can when you see silvering on decals, where the carrier film is, um, generally it's because you've got air or moisture trapped underneath the surface of the decal, um, which is what we want to, as best we can, try and eradicate and avoid to minimise our risk um, of any sort of silvering or anything like that particularly on a dark color it'd be very very noticeable so hopefully you can see we've got a few lumps and bumps here um, and that's just stuff that's on the surface of the model that becomes very very prominent under the decal and there isn't a massive amount i can do about that what you can do is you can buff the surface of the model um prior I, know, I should have done that really um just to get rid of any dust or anything like that um but we are where we are now so we'll try and uh, and deal with that as best we can so as i said i'm going to leave that probably about 10 minutes until that micro set is completely dry and then i'm going to go in and add some ump decal solutions and get it to bed down really really well We'll see how many coats that it takes. Um, so I'll see you for you. It'll be in a few seconds for me. It'll be about 10 minutes or so. So uh, I'll see you shortly. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes and the, uh, the micro set has kind of evaporated away and dried um, from around the decal. And already you can see it's starting to conform to, to the lines and the panels on the wing. However, we need a bit more than that. So this is where this stuff comes in. So this is Ultimate Modern Products Strong Decal Setting Solution. So I have given it a good shake and we're just going to decant a little bit again into the lid and using our watercolour pen, which are available from UMP. We're just going to now start to put this decal solution over the actual decal. We're not going all over the surface of the wing. We're trying to be fairly specific now and placing this solution actually on the top of the decal because it's the decal that we're working on and we want this solution to work its magic on the decal and nowhere else. And there we go. So what will happen, and don't panic, is you will see as this stuff starts to work, you will see the decal will almost appear like it's starting to wrinkle. Um, it's not. 
Um, so give it five, 10 minutes. Once it's not shiny anymore. So as you can see at the moment where it's wet, we've got this shine on the decal. Once that goes away and the decal starts to unwrinkle, I don't know the correct term, um, then if you need to, so using a Q-tip or cotton bud, just go in and start to press it into the various panel lines, etc. Um, and if you need to, you can apply two, three, four coats of this stuff, or you can move up a strength and go to the extra strong. However, be very, very careful with this stuff because it's fantastic. However, it's, it's like napalm for decals. So just be very careful with it um, because you don't want it to damage your decal um, it's for those real stubborn um, decals or where you're going around a really contoured surface that's exactly what it's for so we're going to come back and see what this looks like you can already see already at the top um, through gravity if nothing else but certainly at the top of the decal now we're starting to evaporate away and at the sides we're starting to evaporate away so we're going to let that evaporate let it go uh, come back and see what we look like and uh, and see if we need some more coats. See you in a minute. Okay, so decals are all done. They've had uh, three coats of the um, strong UMP decal solution. And as we can see, Hopefully that's picking that up. We can see that that's bedded down fine. You can see the ridges on the uh, the panel of the wing there. What we've also done is along sort of defined panel lines is we've gone in with a brand new blade uh, on the, uh, the scalpel and just scored the decals to give it that demarcation. So next thing uh, is a panel line wash. So I'm gonna be using this stuff, which is the ultimate weathering wash and it's the concrete. Um, and the idea is this is kind of a light color, probably not realistic, um, but from a model point of view, it's kind of the effect I'm looking for, kind of over exaggerated. Um, yeah, visually interesting, we'll call it that. So I'm gonna be using a flathead brush, cheap brush, and this one's by Talieri, size 10. Um, but flat head, nice and soft. Uh, decant a bit of the wash into the lid of the bottle after a good shake. And then dead simple, really. We're just going to start to apply this wash all over the wing. Um, so obviously on top of the decal, there's been another gloss coat of, um, yeah, <laughs> of uh, VMS gloss um just to to seal that decal in before we start to apply this wash now this wash is water-based um so it's not harmful to anything and what it will allow us to do once dry is remove any excess wash that we don't want with simply with water um it's clay based water soluble and yeah it should work fine so just make sure we're going over all the areas that we want, essentially the whole wing really, because it's so easy to remove um, over a gloss gloss coat. Now you will see there, because we're going onto a very shiny surface, we have got a bit of surface tension that will dissipate um, as we continue to apply the wash. Um, and try and just keep your brush going in the same direction. What we're hoping for is when this is dried, in about sort of 30 to 40 minutes, depending on temperature where you are and all that sort of stuff. But once it's dry, it will, we can start to remove it and it will remain in the panel lines, in the recess panels. Um, and then everywhere else we can, we can take it off. So it's as simple as that guys. So as you can see, there's no real mystery to how we do it. It is just a case of removing that once dry. So what we'll do is come back uh, once that's dry, as I say, in about 30 to 40 minutes, and then I'll remove it. And hopefully we're going to end up with the effect that we want. If we haven't got the effect we want, the benefit of using the clay-based wash 
is that we can literally remove it with water. Um, so yeah, we can we can get rid of it really easy if we need to. Um, so yeah, that's it. I will see you very shortly. Okay, so it's been about 40 minutes and as we can see, the wash um, has dried. Um, and we can tell it's dry because it leaves this sort of matte um, matte finish rather than the wet glossy finish. So now what we're going to do is take some run of the mill uh, kitchen roll, moisten it very slightly. So the more moisture you have on this, the more wash you're going to remove. And what we want to do is just start to remove it in the direction that airflow would travel across the wing in the main um, because then we keep any streaking any residual effects kind of in the direction of of airflow which is exactly what we want um, so we we're just removing this wash and you can see I'm putting no pressure on that at all how easily this wash removes or comes away from the surface of the model so it is a really effective way of doing panel lines and it's as simple as that really and then we're just going in making sure obviously we want it in the panel lines we don't want it on sort of the control surfaces on the wing itself um, and on the on the surface of the decal and the reason we put the other gloss coat on to seal that decal in is so that we can try and avoid any of this wash getting underneath um, the, the decal the carrier film uh, and creating like an outline so now we're at a stage there where it's still a bit messy, so what we need to do is get a clean piece of kitchen roll now. Um, fold that up. And what we're going to do now is just in tiny little circles, we're just going to start to rub over the surface now. And get rid of any of that excess wash that we don't want. Now, if you were to apply this over either a matte or a satin coat, then lots more of this wash would kind of stay on the surface because it will sort of get, um, I wouldn't say stick to because your, dry, your clear coat would be dry, um, but it will get sort of because there's a texture to to a satin coat or a flat coat uh, which we don't always have or shouldn't have on a on a gloss coat um so it would kind of adhere to that to that texture um, which can particularly with armor can be can be quite useful really um but on aircraft particularly as i want to model this and because i'm not an aircraft builder um, as such that you know this is all new to me um, and I want to keep this kind of cleanish um, I don't want it over weathered I'm not going to try any fancy aircraft painting techniques on it um, I just want it as a, as a well constructed cleanish um, finished model and that, that's the look I'm going for. So I don't want loads of weathering and, and all that. We'll do some, but not loads. Because um, that's not the look that, I, that I, I'm going for with this. Because I'm learning um, aircraft modelling, really. Um, I've built a few in the past. But I'm trying to kind of raise my game a little bit to start being able to build aircraft models that I'm actually happy with. I've never ever been happy with an aircraft model that I've built. Um, and it just, it's, it's new to me. Um, and it is a different sort of modeling and weathering is different to how you would do armor or sci-fi or, or whatever. So I am learning. So we'll, we'll start small. 
hence why it's a Tamiya kit. It's a, it's a well-known kit. Um, yeah, so I want to I want to try and get the basics done before I start trying to do anything more complex, really. Because there are some some kits out there that I really want to do because I've got an appreciation for aircraft, absolutely. Um, but I want to make sure I'm in a position where I, I kind of do them justice a little bit. And at the moment, I don't feel like I, I can. Um, and they're quite expensive kits. Um, so we'll start off with something a bit more simple. Simple construction, simple weathering. And try and sort of learn. Learn along the way. Um, because it's, a, it's all a journey, isn't it? Everything we do. Um, particularly when we're we're going into different genres and that sort of stuff, we're we're learning this stuff, um, and you're you're along for the ride with me as I make a mess of this model. <laughs> but there we go. So the majority of the wash is now removed, and you can see it's sort of stuck now um, and adhered into those panels, which is exactly the effect we're after. <laughs> so last thing, we're going to get another piece of kitchen paper moisten it but we don't want it wet that's that's the key otherwise you're just going to bring out all of that work you've done and this one the final one really is just going over the whole surface of the wing in the direction of airflow so if we do have any residual wash on air it's gonna look streaky uh, in the direction of airflow across the wing surface <laughs> And that's it. That is exactly how we're going to do it. Like so. And that's the effect we're after. So that will now, um, once I do the other side, uh, we'll get that flat coated. Um, I'm going to go around the rest of the aircraft, get all the decals in place, um, which is a challenge for me because on armour, you don't have anywhere near the amount of decals and for an aircraft this hasn't got many at all um, but nevertheless it's a challenge for me um, so i'm going to go around do all that off camera i'm going to use exactly the same process as i've used on the wing here um, and get it all done and then we'll come back in the next part and we'll apply some real subtle weathering techniques to it um exhaust stain and that sort of stuff um and then that's it pretty much. And then we're going to be moving on. We're going to be moving on and put it on a base. Um, I don't think we're going to put the pilot figure with it. Um, to be honest, I don't think it will look. I don't think it will bring anything to, to how it looks. Um, and we want to focus on the, the aircraft itself. Um, so until next time, guys, that's it. I'm going to get the rest of this sorted. And when we come back, the plane will be pretty much together and panel line wash and everything else. Um, so that's pretty much it. I will see you next time. Till then, make sure you visit umpretail.com. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, do so. Like this video, leave a comment, I'll read all of them. Um, and make sure you join the Black Rifle Model Works community group on Facebook. Um, all the links for all that stuff in the description of this video. So until next time, guys, stay safe. Happy hobbying. Thank you.